Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on this podcast, as you guys can see, I have a story time. So on this story time, I am going to talk to you about the hotel lizard, the narcissist hotel lizard. I've talked to you guys about gang stalking and how you always have to be basically aware of your surroundings so if you are at the grocery stores or you're somewhere late at night or you're getting into your car late at night or you're driving around late at night where no one can see you um if you're meeting people you know and you're having a good time with your friends and you decide hey let's take the party elsewhere something more personal let's go back to my house um things like that you have to be very cautious and very aware of those things and i've i've shared with you guys quite a few stories even stories where you know i trusted someone just because they were you know they looked like someone's grandmother sweet granny you know she's crying to me um she's telling me her story and next thing you know you know she walks out does not pay for her stuff um you know and i'm like oh okay i got played you know by a grandmother you know someone that in the you know, when I, when i'm looking at the appearance this person's dress nice you know, I can tell they took care of themselves, you know, um, in their life. You know, I can tell that this is someone that even though they're older, they're someone who is an intellect, you know. And while I'm having a conversation with them, I'm giving them the trust that I usually won't give to people just because they're elder. You know, they're my they're my elder. So, um that's when I learned a tough lesson right there where I was like, wow, I can't trust someone just because they're old. I've ran into lots of kids in my neighborhood who, you know, um, they've, they've put in a lot of work and did a lot of things and they're children. And you're thinking, this is a sweet little 10 year old, 12 year old, he's selling candy. And he's, you know, he's selling nickel bags, basically, you know, Um, and and you you don't know this type of stuff is going on. And it's sometimes happening right in front of you. So another thing that I wanted to talk about before I get into this video right on this hotel lizard, that's what I'm gonna call him, because I know you guys have probably heard the the term, but a lot of narcissists who are truck drivers you know they go after parking lot lizards which are women who you know want to play for some extra cash or whatever right so the way they maneuver around you know to these truck drivers it's um in a way that it's very lizard like and um i've talked to you guys about um going into places that are not your territory meaning that sometimes in your territory you're around people that you grew up with and although these things could feel safe it could also feel as if you there's nowhere to go because some people from your past might not um might still carry some type of hate towards you whether you did something or you didn't a lot of times they did things to you and then they'll gang stalk you years later they'll talk bad about you to other people and it's like hey you're the one who who did something to me or stole from me and you know if you run across these people in in a in your community you know because a lot of times when you connect with someone whether it's bad or good you better believe you're going to reconnect with them and this is why a lot of times the narcissist um doesn't care whether you speak to them or not because to them it's like hey i'm reconnecting um i'm going to reconnect with you whether you like it or not especially if we're around the same territory or if i'm familiar with your territory and i decide to go to places i know you might be and even if i don't go to certain places just me being in your city i feel like one day i'm going to see you. this is why the narcissist does not chase 
people, sometimes they don't hoover you back because to them, it's like you'll always be around, you know? This is why certain people feel like, you know, they have to move out of a state and go somewhere else, you know? Um, there's also, um, you know, for instances, um, sometimes um, you might go through situations with people and um, where maybe they might owe you money, right? And they've been dodging you. But chances are you're going to bump in, bump into that person. And this is why people tell you to be careful about who you connect with. Sometimes certain cultures won't even allow you to talk to people outside of your family. Certain cultures... Um, you're not allowed to look people in the eyes, certain cultures, you're not allowed to touch strangers, shake hands. Um, and people think, oh, that's weird. But it's not. It's more about exchanging energy and narcissists don't really care if it's positive or negative. So to them, when you're going out to places like bars, clubs, even social media, they feel like if they befriend you online, there's just going to be a matter of time before you meet them in person. And that's not a lie. And that's not a lie because, see, my generation was, you know, one of the first to be online, right? To, to really start um, connecting with strangers and things like that. And people thought it was so weird. It was so new to everyone. But I remember like times where I would befriend women, you know, females online, we would just befriend each other um, or we knew we had mutual friends. So we would just feel like, oh, okay, I want to be this person's friend. They hang around the same crowd I hang around. But then you're not knowing at that time, we're not knowing that there's narcissists, there's older people, there's all type of people in here. And they're connecting with people in our circle and they know it's a matter of time before they connect with other people. And by the time you realize all this trauma you go through with these people, you realize that a lot of these people were outsiders and they came into your community, right? So everywhere you go, you're going to run across narcissists who migrated wherever you're at. And when you run across them, they almost act like it's their territory. And a lot of times, it's not even their territory. They've just been there for a while. They've been squatting there with someone, right? And they all have a secret code. They all have a secret language. And they know, hey, you know, I'm going to end up bumping into you in, per in person. Or if I connect with you and have a small conversation with you at this restaurant... Um, I might bump into you again or I might look you up. Sometimes they meet you or sometimes they come to your job. They they ask people, hey, where's that one person, you know, and they get your name. And next thing you know, they're friend requesting you. And I know this um, because I've had women, like I said, that I connected with and in person and we weren't even trying to connect in person. It just so happened that we're just like, hey, we've been friends online. Hey, we're at the same spot and hey you know you're a good catch and now we're friends for real you know so that's how they maneuver and sometimes they pretend like they don't know each other and they don't know certain people and sometimes they act like complete loners and they're not really loners they they they're all on a prowl together so I wanted to go over that basis before I get into this video just so that you can kind of have an idea of the mindset of a narcissist everywhere you go. You know, sometimes you're thinking to yourself, I'm a positive person. Um, you know, I went through that stage, too, where you're like um, studying the law of attraction and you're like, I'm just going with the flow, being careless, not knowing that on your way to the law of attraction not everything that is being attracted to you is good 
some of these things are trying to stop you. So you have to be careful how much energy you give. And, you know, and, and that's what most narcissists want. They want energy. What's energy? It's giving up information and as much as they can get from you. And when narcissists try to get information, they put you on the spotlight in a way where it's almost like you're going to feel like you're the one being rude. You know, um, it's almost going to feel like you're the one that's being rude for basically cutting them off you know or not wanting to answer certain questions or anything like that narcissists are very intrusive you know um they want to know how far they can push you usually right away right away they usually you know they want to see how how far they can take it um they'll you know take their time because you know, time doesn't mean anything to them, so they'll take their time. But based on their questions, you basically almost can read between the line what type of monster you're dealing with. You know, the narcissists, you know, there there's many masks that narcissists wear. It's not just, you know, narcissistic characteristics, right? You know, some of them are, are you know predators and it's like it's like live and die if they don't get the type of supply that they are looking for some of them you know they come off as charming and you could be dealing with a whole serial killer you know um and when they ask you certain questions based on the game that they like to play with people like I said, you can read between the lines and if you're someone who is not paying attention or you're someone who um, is being deceived um, when it comes to their fake charm, um, then you can fall for it, you know? So this hotel lizard that I wanna talk about is someone who was watching me, basically right i told myself i'm going to go to this hotel i'm going to basically have a spa day just a day for myself to you know pamper yourself you know do some skincare you know um you know get into a hot tub you know sauna and narcissists like i've said are everywhere so i have experienced these people these lizard people that's what I'm gonna call them. Um, I've experienced these lizard people. If I go to a um, a casino, right? I've been to a casino before, and they're everywhere in there. So, a lot of times when I would go to the casino, I would go with my family, and um, I never really paid attention to any of that stuff. And I think a lot of times when you're with your family, it's different. Um, they kind of lay off of you you know especially when you're with other people if you're with other women and they think that you guys are just drinking and having a good time and you guys are careless they'll come around they'll joke around with you they'll give you some attention because they feel like you're only there to get attention they're like i know you're in here for attention i'm gonna give it to you i know you're looking for someone and i'm going to prey on you when you could be married you know you could have children you know you could be pregnant they won't care um and i've been in those situations where i'm like okay i didn't know you know you go to a hotel and there's these lizards these narcissist lizards everywhere um you you know when you go to places like concerts or bars or festivals um you know um anywhere everywhere and anywhere but a lot of times um, when it comes to social places, what most people don't know is that these people work in teams. So if you're going to, to the circus, they're all over the place wearing masks, acting like they're part of the show when they're not. You know, they're sitting there, hey, I'm, I'm a regular here, you know, I can show you around. And some of these people are sick, twisted. They can put stuff in your drinks, you know, um... And, you know, a lot of times if you're alone, just like if you're living alone, you know, that's when they, they really try to target you because 
they're jumping into conclusions that you're basically miserable or you're sad or things like that so that's the first thing i noticed when i was here i felt the energy of this person basically watching me you know i'm going to my car um walking you know and and i'm covered up you know i'm, I'm wearing a sweater as, with a zipper and you know sweatpants and i'm very like i'm gonna just really relax and be cozy and um in a little bit i'm going to go to the spa right so um eventually you know when i go out there to the spa i end up taking a, a, a shower before going out there so i was basically already wet and i came out so this person was watching me to the point where they knew i went back to my room to take a shower like you were watching me that hard that you knew i took a shower you know i could have went in into the pool and got wet and then went back to the room but they were paying attention to the point where it's like oh i know i know you went in there and you took a shower before coming out here right and um before before they even told me this this was part of the conversation but basically that's to say that this person was watching me and they even let it be known that they were watching me the whole time right i already felt like they were but i wasn't quite sure because i'm thinking to myself maybe they're here with someone else or something you know it's a hotel you're not you're expecting most people at the hotel to be with other people or you know um have plans or maybe even you know be staying over you know for work or something you know or you know um someone stopping by you know for a trip maybe some people sometimes are homeless you know you you know there's going to be all type of people but you're not expecting anyone you're basically expecting everyone to basically mind their business not to prey on people and stalk them and watch them check in and, and watch what room they're in and things like that you know i thought that was creepy so um basically i'm in the jacuzzi i'm just in there and next thing i know you know an older dude comes in um i turn basically my back towards him because i just don't want to be having like eye contact or anything so it was done purposely you know um then while i'm in there the same dude that had been watching me was sitting down like in a section where you know a sectional area um for lounging and um he's just watching and then he says is is the water hot is it really hot or is it not you know is it warm or whatever and i didn't say anything because i'm thinking to myself like i'm not talking to anyone right i'm here basically to relax so I didn't say anything. I'm thinking he's not even talking to me. I'm thinking maybe he's talking to the guy behind me. So the guy behind me starts talking to him and he's like, oh, um, you know, it's 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 hot. It feels good. He doesn't say anything for a while. He sits in the little patio section, maybe for another 20 minutes. He's pacing around. Um, he, he leaves or whatever, comes right back. And then he's like, you look like you're really relaxed in there and i didn't say anything so then he says it again and i said oh i am he said you haven't moved a, a muscle like basically saying like i'm frozen am i scared or something and then i said oh i'm just relaxing i'm just relaxing or whatever like he's telling me i'm not moving a muscle and in my mind i'm thinking to myself he probably thinks that i'm in i'm uncomfortable because there's nothing but guys outside and i'm basically the only only girl outside right and i'm thinking to myself like no like I, i'm not uncomfortable i'm minding my own business so i basically don't say anything i'm quiet again um i'm just relaxing again you know the water's bubbling on me and um 
he walks around and he actually comes inside the pool section and he tell he starts talking to the to the to the older dude that was um in the pool with me i mean in the jacuzzi with me and um he basically starts telling him like you know oh you know that water or whatever it only gets to a certain type of temperature it doesn't get hotter than a certain degree or whatever and i'm thinking to myself if you already knew that then why did you ask you know what i'm saying why why did you keep asking why did you i'm thinking to myself you just want to talk basically you just want to conversate but i'm in my head i'm still kind of like I'm just processing everything, but I'm still there lounging, minding my business, but I'm processing everything like, oh, he's been here before. He's been, you know, this is probably one of those places he always comes to. So then he tells the other guy, he goes, um, he goes, um, you came back, like you came back here to this hotel, like you came back, like meaning that he's seen him before or he's seen him around and he came back, meaning that he's paying attention to people's faces and things like that. So I'm thinking to myself, why is he studying everyone? Does he have some type of, you know, something weird going on in his hotel room and he wants to study the people that are coming in, questioning them, making sure that they're not, you know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, but this is what I'm processing. You know, narcissists say so many things, um, and all you have to do is decipher everything that's going on. So he's like, oh, you know, they cleaned it out earlier. So he basically knows everything about the jacuzzi. And I'm thinking to myself, he's probably been here watching girls all day, right? Then two girls pass by. That's what I'm thinking. Then two girls pass by. And he goes, oh, I know them. Those are my, those are my homegirls or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I'm still minding my business. But he's letting me know, like, I know other girls other than you. I know other girls here. And I'm thinking, like, this isn't a sorority house. It's a freaking hotel, you know. Um, but he's like, oh, I know them. And it's like, I'm not going to compete for you with other women that's weird you know narcissists try to triangulate you they want to almost make it seem like that's what's going to make them look desirable the fact that other people want them and this is why sometimes when you're with the narcissist they're telling you i'm not cheating on you i'm only with you you know a lot of girls want me a lot of women want me but i'm with you and it's not true they want you to be like in love with them, but they are predators. Like they try to t to come off to you as the quiet narcissist sometimes even, and they make it seem like I don't chase girls. They chase me. You know what I'm saying? But that's not true. They're the ones who are consistently being nice, flirting, um, offering money offering food offering dates they're the ones that are you know just they're they're trying to love bomb you they're trying to impress you and certain things can impress certain women but certain women who are more mature are not impressed by those simple things um because you could just do it for yourself you realize as you get older all those things are used to lure you in you know another thing that i experience with this hotel lizard um is that it's like hmm it's actually pretty funny let me tell you why it's funny it's funny because once they make up their mind they believe that what they think is true so it doesn't matter if you tell them that their perception of you is wrong they don't believe what you're saying to them so if you tell them that you don't like them, they're like, no, you do like me. You're probably just married or you do like me, but you're probably, you know, you're probably shy. So they make an excuse to why you don't give in to their demands. 
Another thing that I felt was very amusing about this um, hotel lizard is that just like he's making, you know, his own assumptions or perceptions, I'm reading between the lines and they can't even see through my shell. They cannot see my spirit. The narcissist cannot see your spirit. And I thought it was almost amusing because I'm like, you can't see that I'm seeing through you. It, it's almost crazy. So you can, you know, you can play the, the innocent role like you don't know what's going on and play really dumb with them. And honestly, um, once you know who they are, they can't fool you. You know, it, it, you're just going to another level. You know, paid attention to with this hotel lizard is that um just like uh just like when you're with you know the narcissist they make it seem like they don't chase you know women or men whatever it is that they're into or they just make it seem like they don't they're not chasing a new supply and you're telling them yes you are yes you are right a lot of times you know to a lot of us if you really look back and to the beginning um when you can explain certain arguments and why certain arguments were taken too far didn't you realize how the narcissist would keep coming back and they'll come back very desperately that's because they're constantly on the prowl just like this hotel lizard and things aren't always as it seems now they want to pay for drinks now they want to have fun and things like that you know and they almost feel like hey i know as a woman you're a gold digger that's what the narcissist assumes and they feel like i'm going to use you before you use me and to them it's like just by talking to them it makes them feel like you like them or something you know this is why I say you have to be careful about connecting with people and having conversations with certain people. But, you know, that's what I realized when, um, you know, he said he when I started deciphering that he had been here before. This is somewhere he comes to regularly. And um, when he said those are my homegirls, I said to myself, um, he wants to make himself look desirable. So. The dude that was in the jacuzzi with me or whatever, he gets out, he goes into the sauna, and I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, wow, I'm here by myself. And um, it almost sounded like he's seen this other guy before, but at the same time, I'm not quite sure. So then he tells me if I know him, and I'm thinking to myself, like, no, don't you? You just told him you're back. He said, are you back? He said, you came back? And, he's, and the other guy goes, yeah, I haven't been here in a while, but, you know, I always come here because I like to relax. It's like, you know, it's very peaceful. It's not a lot of people, whatever. So um, I'm thinking to myself, like, the way he said you came back, like he knew he had been here before, I'm assuming he knows him. So when he asked me if I knew him, I'm just like, no. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, do you know him? And he goes, no, I don't know that guy. So I'm thinking to myself, he tried to make himself almost seem like he was friends with the with the dude in the in the jacuzzi with me. He tried to make it seem like they kind of had a connection. And once he had him talking, he was trying to force me into the conversation because he had already spoke out and said, hey, you look really comfortable. Then um he had spoke out before and said, hey, is it how hot is it there? Is it actually getting hot? Um, so he already he was he kept asking questions that he already knew the answer to. But he was telling the other guy. So I'm thinking to myself, OK, you tried to befriend the other guy in order to get close to me. So this is why I said they move around like lizards. They're very slippery. And if you're someone that's with your friends and you're having a good time, sometimes you will feed into these people because, see, when it comes to the narcissist, they want to party. They want to have a good time. And sometimes they do come off charming or sometimes they're showing you their social media and they're, they're showing you, look, I have a lot of followers. Look, I'm into cooking. I'm into this. They're showing you all these things, making them 
themselves almost seem like they're relatable to you. But then at the same time, they'll say something that is like weird, right? So this is where it went left for me, where I was like, oh, here it goes, right? He said, are you sad? And I said, no, why would I be sad? And he goes, um, are you here with someone? Are you here with like, do you have a man? And then I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, he's like, is he here? And I was like, why? And he's like, oh, I'm just asking. And then he basically lets me know he knows what room I'm staying in. And he's like, oh, I had that room before. And I'm just like, okay. Like, you know, and it started to get kind of creepy. And then he goes, I'm going to walk to the store. Do you want to walk with me? And I'm like, no. And then um, to me, it was crazy because he worked his way from the patio section all the way into the water where he was clearly not going to get into. And the next thing you know, he's like sitting in a chair in front of me while I'm trying to relax. And a part of me is like, get up, you know, a part of me is like, get up and go and not give him any energy. But then a part of me is like, no, this is what I came for. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to let any narcissist think that he's going to like run me off because someone is scared of him. So I'm going to answer his questions and my energy is going to say, I know what you're doing. It's not going to work. We're cool, though. And I respect you and whatever the hell you're doing. I don't I don't want no I don't want to get in between whatever you got going on in, in this hotel. But, you know, like, I hope you enjoy yourself, but it's not going to be with me. Right. So he said to me. You know, there's a lot of guys that come in here and that's all they do. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, like, why is he telling me that? Is it because he's one of those guys? And if he is, like, I'm not a freaking hooker, clearly. So it was just crazy because it went from, hey, how's that jacuzzi to, you know, the seduction and the the boastfulness in his demeanor was almost like yeah she likes me yeah she's feeling me and it was actually the opposite it was actually it was actually the opposite of what he was believing or what he was feeling like or whatever self-esteem boost that he needed and you know um when i got out of the jacuzzi or whatever and i started drying up he thought that maybe I was going to stay there and talk to him and I'm putting my sandals and I'm like, okay, well, have a good night. And I'm leaving and I'm thinking to my, and you could just tell that he was kind of almost like shocked, like, oh, she played me. But because I'm smart enough to know that narcissists don't really care about the negative or positive attention. It's just the fact that I even gave them any attention, even though they forced themselves on me, even though they kept coming closer and closer like a lizard until they were just in my face, you know, with their little tongue out, hissing at me, you know, um, I was smart enough to know that the only reason I went along with it is because I was intrigued with how dumb and how pathetic narcissists really are when you zoom in i knew that the only reason this person wanted access to me it wasn't because hey look those are my homegirls and it's all a game because they're just trying to lure you into their world because now it can be used to triangulate me with them meaning that it didn't matter it what I said to this person. It didn't matter if I was being careful with my words and my conversation and giving them access to my personal life and things of that nature. It was the simple fact that I gave them any energy so they can use this situation to now go and talk to those other women that he claimed are his homegirls or his friends or whoever, right? He can go to them and make up a story 
that has nothing to do with anything that we discussed and or they can try to make you do something embarrassing or dare you into doing something just to have a story to tell so to me this hotel lizard thing was more of an experiment um, and it's not something that I advise others to do because um, sometimes you can fall for their charm after a while. You can't play someone who's not playing. So this is what I'm saying when it comes to narcissists is that these people are like lizard people, but and they'll and they'll squirm themselves into your life. But it's only if you allow it, you know, um, when I met the narcissist, I was young, I was naive. Um, I didn't know that how predatorial narcissists are. I didn't know how they, the tactics that they use, their, um, I didn't know that their charm was fake. I didn't think that people can pretend to smile and pretend to laugh and stuff like that and pretend to be happy people and I didn't know that that was a thing because I thought when you're happy genuinely you're just genuinely happy but if the narcissist claims to be so happy then you know um they wouldn't seek out to do harmful things to people they're pretending you know um they feel awful all the time and it's scary when you finally know what you have the signs that you need to be watching out for it's kind of scary when you see it and you process it you know, and you start to um you start to view them as scary you know like maybe in the past you during the love bombing you thought to yourself this is my soulmate i feel tingly inside i don't know what that is it's it's thrilling it's this thrill right even as a woman sometimes you can get thrilled by getting attention from from other people right you can you can feel you can start feeling yourself but if you're attracting attention to a narcissist and sometimes you're not even doing anything you're not even dressed in a way where you're trying to attract that they're just pure predators they don't really care what the supply even looks like sometimes it's just they need supply they need something you know um, and they're testing your mind out they're trying to see where you're at so with me where this guy took me left was when he asked me if i was sad he was like you look like you were sad and i said no i'm just relaxing and i said it seems like you're trying to project those things onto me and i'm not doing anything but minding my business and he kind of was like had this dumb look in his face like okay that didn't work and he's it and he goes, no, it just seemed like you were over here really quiet and you needed some company or something. It se seemed like you were bored. I know it could be boring sometimes when you go to places and you're alone or something. And I'm, So he was fishing for information. Am I going to be alone? Am I going to stay alone? Then he's asking me, you know, do you have a man? You know, he knows what room I'm staying. So this is why I'm making this this podcast because... It was just kind of freaky, but like I said, I got up, you know, was like, oh, you know, have a good night. And he just looked dumb. He looked dumb, but I could see his eyes lighting up and I just slipped right through, jumped right back in the pond, you know. Um, so, you know, be careful, you guys. Um, one thing that I'm, um, you know, right this experience i feel like i wanted to really get into their mind and the more i let them talk the more they told on themselves but never really test these people out i feel like with a lot of narcissists when you do get into their mind and you actually you know you understand where they're going at depending on what type of narcissist you have some that are sinister they don't the the more you know about them the more they want to hurt you because they feel like oh you understand me oh i really want to hurt you so you just really have to be careful and you know 
don't give these people any attention you know don't sit there and play with them don't sit there and you know start exchanging numbers with them and thinking to yourself oh i'm going to talk to them when i'm bored because they'll get you these people are lizards and they'll squeeze themselves into anything you know and every everything and everyone so um i hope that you know my story time um was interesting enough <laughs> and i hope that it was helpful and these things can um help you in order to survive in this narcissistic world so um if you guys enjoyed this podcast please do not forget to like share comment um subscribe if you guys are new to my channel and you guys enjoyed um you know podcasts like these um if you guys do want to book a session with me my booking information you guys is on the description just always remember to give me 24 hours um to respond to you and as always i'm sending you guys lots of love light peace and your healing and i'll talk to you guys on the next one love you guys bye